Hey guys, Chase Mountains here. Thanks for joining us in this little recovery video for hikers and mountaineers. I am at the Refugio Gonella on the Italian side of Mont Blanc and uh, I'm having a rest day. And this video is all about recovering from either hiking or mountaineering, whatever you're into, whatever you've been doing in the last few days. We all know that this kind of stuff makes you very stiff and sore and makes you kind of walk around like a robot. So in this video, I'm going to start at the bottom of the body. We're going to work on the feet here. Tuck your toes underneath, sit on your heels. And we're going to start, and we're going to start moving up the body, stretching not everything, but uh, a lot of different muscles on the way up and muscles that are very common to get uh, tight and uh, common things that aggravate hikers and mountaineers who are doing a lot of uphill work. And if you're stiff and tight, you're not really gonna be hiking and climbing efficiently. So follow along with this. Hope you learn a couple of things along the way and uh, get a little bit more supple and a little bit stronger in our hiking. So we're gonna hang out here for what's well, almost been two minutes in this dorsiflexion position. We're stretching the bottom of the feet, the plantar fascia, which gets super tight, especially for me. I've been wearing really rigid boots and that really doesn't help. But now we're gonna go into stretching the opposite side of the ankle. We're gonna go into plantar flexion now. So we're stretching the bottom or the front of the ankle. This is something I just kind of started doing on my own. I never really learnt this exercise, so it doesn't really have a name. I just call it like knee lifts <laughs> for obvious reasons. So we're just going to grab, grab the knee and just pull it up off the ground a little bit. Now, if you're uncomfortable in this position to start off with, it's probably not necessary that you lift the knees. I'm doing about 10 reps each side. For many of you, it might just be okay to just sit in that position with your ankles flat on the floor. And uh, if you're not lifting your knee, try and stay nice and upright and keep your shoulders directly above your hips and push your chest out and stand nice and tall. But if you're with me, you want to try this knee lift and uh, it's not hurting you, then go ahead. Wow, this one's going to be tough for me. This is quite embarrassing. I'm pretty tight through my back here. I've been carrying like a 25 kilo pack and doing a whole bunch of hiking over the last few weeks preparing for this trip. So. I am really, really tight through that back. That looks pretty embarrassing. Um, but what I'm trying to do here is get my heel on the ground, right? So this is a downward dog. You've obviously seen it before. This one, uh, where I'm extending my leg through here, is just putting a little bit of extra body weight and a little bit of extra pressure into that left leg that I'm stretching. And honestly, I'm just playing around here. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just going with the flow, so. <laughs> If you want to lift up that other leg, you can. It looks like I'm going into a little bit of bouncing here. This is a technique called ballistic stretching. And it's a really good way to make some incredibly fast uh, gains in terms of your mobility. But just take it easy if it's your first time doing that. I just took a couple of little bounces. We'll switch to the other side. And again, I'm raising that leg to just put a little bit more resistance into that stretch. So uh, this is kind of like a loaded calf stretch in a downward dog. I'm not trying to do the perfect downward dog, I'm trying to stretch my calf with as much of my body weight as, as I possibly can. So I'm trying not to use my upper body much at all, I'm trying to push as much load into uh, my heel as possible to get a really nice stretch through my calf. I'm trying to keep that knee straight and lift the hips nice and high. And there's that ballistic bounce there that I'm doing, just throwing my heel down to the ground. And then we can walk back up to the standing pike position. And yeah, usually I'm able to get my hands flat on the ground. Maybe not the first time that I roll out of bed in the morning, but after a little bit of stretching, I can usually get my hands flat on the ground with my knees straight. And for me, that's a nice benchmark to be able to try and maintain. But as you can see, I am not there today. So I'm just hanging out here in this position with my back fairly straight. 
So I'm trying to keep what we call a neutral spine. So my back relatively flat, I'm trying to pull my shoulder blades back a little bit there. And I'm really pushing my hip back behind me as much as I can, keeping my knees straight. And I'm just gently moving around a little bit in that position, trying to move into hamstring flexibility. Now we're going to work a little more, bit more dynamically with that same position by doing these uh, single leg bodyweight deadlifts. So I'm now focusing on the left leg. My right toe is just placed a little bit behind my uh, left heel there with my knee bent. And that's really just to keep me balanced as I hinge forward into the stretch while keeping a, a straight back. Swap to the other side. Same deal, so now that right knee is completely straight. I should probably go on a little bit fast there. Usually I'm really trying to focus on going nice and slow and under control, so I slow them right down. You can put your hands behind your back and that'll really open up your chest to make sure you're not hunching over. It is pretty important that we keep a nice straight back and a neutral spine when we do this. It's not really about how low you're getting, it's about how you feel in the stretch. So there's really no point compromising, trying to get to the ground, trying to get your hands flat on the ground or get as low with your head as possible because then you're just compensating with other stuff. So it's all about how you feel and not, not really about how the stretch looks. We're gonna get into some front of hip stretching here, which I do absolutely every day and I really recommend for everyone, especially if you've got a desk job, to do a whole lot more uh, front of hip stretching. This is a, a pretty standard hip flexor stretch. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to roll my hips down and underneath, I'm trying to scoop my hips. And if I'm doing this right, then I'll feel uh, stretching on the front of my hip, just uh, just in front of the, the kind of bony part, the tuberosity on the pelvis. I'm trying to grab in my butt there and almost like scooping my hips under to help. The second variation of this is then pulling that quad and this like yoga quad stretch. So here, the stretch moves down the quad a little bit. It moves down towards the knee more for me. It's probably gonna be different for you because everyone's hips are set up a little bit differently. But I've, again, I've got my, my other hand on my, my ribs, trying to keep my ribs nice and uh, tucked. And if you, uh, if you need to balance, like I am at the moment, there's a little bit of wind around, you can uh, put a hand out and balance on something else. My buddy Roger here has got a camera and uh, he's going to show you what it looks like around this area behind me because it's so beautiful. We're literally just above a glacier. So we'll cut to the other camera and I'll show you what it looks like around here. He's going to do a little turn. We just hang out in that stretch. We want to spend sort of 60 to 90 seconds on each side. We're going to go back into just the standard hip flexor stretch here. Again, we want to scoop those uh, hips down and underneath, squeeze your butt. And it's kind of like you're pressing that left knee now into the floor. Come up into that yoga quad stretch, so I'm grabbing the back of my foot, really trying to force my hips forward, and uh, if you need something underneath that knee, for sure, grab a towel or anything you can, just to try and soften that up a little bit. Hope you guys are enjoying the glacial view. This is definitely one of the nicest places that I've ever stretched. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And we're so lucky that this refugio has a uh, yoga mat sitting around that you can just come and grab. Another refugio that I was in on the way up here had a foam roll up and that was amazing. All right, 
we're slowly moving up the body. We are now working on hip mobility. We're going to do some hip swivels. So this is one of my favorite stretches at the moment, uh, or mobility drills really, I guess. What I'm doing is keeping my heel and my toe on the ground, and I'm internally rotating my knee as much as I can. There's no point forcing it to the ground and lifting your butt up off the ground. The idea here is that you keep your butt on the ground and you just rotate inwards as much as you can. And then we do the same in external rotation. So again, pretty much keeping that, that heel on the ground and externally rotating, trying to get the knee as wide as possible. Again, with the butt on the ground. I'm doing five or six reps on, it, on each, uh, each rotation, each side. Looking around, enjoying the view. It's also important to concentrate on, on what's happening in your body as well. We'll flip over to the left side. Internal rotation, heel and that big toe on the ground. We'll rotate so you can see what it looks like from the side. Beautiful stretch for the hips. Might feel a little bit clunky. First thing in the morning, this feels pretty rough for me. But I guarantee you, the more often you do it, the better you'll feel. Help you get deeper into your squat. Help you get uh, the knee higher on the step ups. So if you're if you're a short person, you know work on hip mobility so you can get uh, up those high steps. All right, this is a more fluid version of that uh, hip swivel. So you can see now that my butt is coming up off the floor much more, especially in my right side, which is way tighter. But these feel great. Um, this is much more of a loose fluid movement and I'm doing about 10 uh, rotations. Still keeping my heels and toes on the ground but I'm, we can allow the butt to come off the ground a little bit. Well this is an old classic figure 4 glute stretch. So this one gets obviously glute, um, but a bit of piriformis for me, kind of depending on how your hips are set up and you know where you're tight, where you're strong, where you're mobile. You feel it in different places. But basically you want to reach through that gap uh, between your legs there and interlace the fingers over the front of the knee. Or if you like, you can do what I'm doing now and push the right knee away from you and you'll feel it also in the front of the hip. Where it really just depends where you feel tight. I love this stretch because it basically it tells you where you're tight and we're going to spend about a minute here and just try and chill, try and relax in this position, look around, enjoy that view. Alright, we're going on the other side, so interlacing the fingers on the front of the left knee, I'll switch around. Now this is called a figure four stretch but trying to see the four there. I don't know if you guys can make out a four. That one looks like a four, I guess. Now I'm pushing away with that left knee. Try and square the hips off. You'll notice that my back is nice and flat on the yoga mat. breathe as well while we're stretching. Probably one thing that I've forgotten through this whole video is really need, really need to focus, especially when you've got that really tight spot that we need to hang out and, and push through. Fixing my hair up here and going into a hollow. Ah, you didn't see that coming, did you? I'm sneaking in a little bit of core strength. Never a bad time to do a hollow. Never a bad time to work on core. And the one thing that I've said from you know the last eight years of being a trainer is something that uh, someone told me when I first started is you can never do too much core strength and I totally totally believe that you could do core all day and I don't think it's going to do anything bad for you I am not I don't have the strongest core uh, as you can see I'm probably starting to struggle here a little bit but 
more I work on it, and if I go through phases of doing loads of core strength, then I feel so much better. It really helps everything out, especially if you're carrying a heavy pack, because something in the body's got to put up with that weight. Something's got to support it. So the core is uh, is a great way to assist you in, uh, in carrying heavier stuff and the back as well, which I've got some videos coming out on soon about strengthening the back for heavy pack carrying, so hang in there. All right, we're doing a standard upward dog now, so stretching out that, the core and the abs a little bit from that uh, hollow that we did. We have a little bit of hip as well. Gonna roll your shoulders back here, push your chest out, and uh, keep those elbows straight. Squeeze your butt to protect your lower back. Hang out there and enjoy the stretch. Take a few deep breaths. You don't want to be in this position with your uh, shoulders up near your ears. You want to drop those shoulders down so you can see there that I'm pushing my, sh my shoulders down as low as possible. Pushing my hands into the floor. So we're working a little bit of strength same time with the shoulder girdles in that upward dog. Take a little rest position in this cat pose here. Chest to ground, hands up above, and we're going to transition onto our back into a little bit of uh, thoracic and glute posterior chain strengthening stuff. So this is a really nice thoracic stretch and a basic one that just about everyone should be able to do. I'm trying to get my hips up as high as I can. I'm squeezing my butt there. And this is a, a, like a very basic kind of thoracic bridge, which we're gonna get into soon. But now what I'm doing is I'm gonna focus on putting all my weight into one leg at a time, very, very slowly in this glute bridge march. So the hips have to stay up, the glutes have to be engaged, and just take a little bit of weight off one leg at a time to test out that glute strength. All right, looks like I'm gonna get into a, an attempt of a thoracic bridge here, but I'm pretty tired to see how this goes. Squeeze the butt to protect the lower back. You can try that if you like, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it if it's your first time and this is a recovery stretch for you. Usually I'm pretty capable of maintaining that for a meal or so, but my back is very tight and uh, that's a pretty bad effort. <laughs> Slowly come down. That's a nice stretch though when you get it and when you can come up into that position, it does feel does feel really nice for the mid and lower back. All right, spin around so you can check out the next move that we're doing. We're gonna get into a thoracic twist. So I've dropped my right shoulder on the ground. I've got my left hand flat on the ground and that left hand is pressing and aiding the twist. So I've put my right shoulder into the ground and I'm putting some weight into there. And then with that left hand, I'm pushing back in the opposite direction. So back towards the glacier behind me, I'm trying to twist my body without twisting too much through the hips. Your hips can compensate a little bit in this position. Now we're gonna go into a trap uh, underneath the stretch. So reaching up with that left hand and then across with the right hand. And I'm kind of just squashing, squashing my right shoulder to get a little bit of a trap stretch. And the idea here is that I'm trying to push that left armpit and imagine like you're trying to press that left armpit into the ground and at the same time reaching up high with the left hand. All right, we'll switch to the other side in the uh, thoracic, uh, the upper thoracic stretch. 
this twisting movement. So you can see now this is a better angle, but I'm pushing in with my right hand to try and rotate my whole back so that my shoulders are essentially on top of one another in this position. I'm getting a little bit of rotation through the hips there. You can see that I'm, well, I'm trying to flatten them out a little bit. That looks better, but you want to keep the hips fairly neutral. You don't want them to come along with the ride. You want all the movement to come from the thoracic uh, mid-back. If you've been carrying a heavy pack, then you're going to be tight through there and you're going to enjoy that stretch. We're going to an underneath, so a trap stretch. So left shoulder dropped onto the floor, right hand reaching up, and now we're trying to press the right armpit to the floor. Big deep breaths here, and just try and sink in as much as you can. It really, you really have to be active, or at least I do. I have to put a lot of effort into this stretch to feel something. But for you, you might be different. Just depends on the way these shoulders are set up and where you're tight and where you're, where you're strong. Just try and figure it out. Try and find a tight spot and uh, get in there. Alright, we're almost done. We're moving up the body. We've got the neck left to go. Now, my neck is terrible and I have to do a lot of neck, neck stretching regularly. Believe it or not, I spend a lot of time at a computer looking at uh, people's programs doing programming on uh, Excel documents, sitting at a computer all day editing these videos, so I feel ya. If you get a desk job, I'm with you man. I know exactly what it's like. This is a nice little neck stretch. I'm depressing my shoulder with my hand whilst uh, pulling my opposite ear back behind me. If you like, you can drop that right hand behind your back as well. Basically, you're trying to push your shoulder and your ear in opposite directions to stretch the outside of the neck there. And for me, when I do this, I can't breathe. I can only hold this for about 25 seconds and then I start hyperventilating. It's probably one of the tightest muscles in my body. It's ridiculous. And uh, you can bet I'm holding a bit of stress there. So I try and get this done every day. This is slightly different. I'm pulling now from my head very gently, mind you. Um, it's hard to see, but I'm kind of rotating my, lifting my chin so that I can stretch more of the front of the neck. And again, this is, this is a tough one for me. So lifting the chin a little bit, pulling slightly on the top of my head and trying to maintain a fairly neutral upper body so that I'm not compensating in any other position. Very important to breathe deeply through these stretches. Well, that's not nearly enough neck stretching, but that's enough for the video. Thanks for following along. I hope you've enjoyed this stretch and the views. Uh, it wouldn't be right if I didn't show you around a little bit. Hey, I'm gonna grab the camera and give you guys a little bit of a, a glacier tour. Check this place out, it is incredible. It is, uh, this refugio is just sitting right on top of this really steep, rocky section of this amazing glacier, the Miage, Miage Glacier, on the Italian side of Mont Blanc, and we're gonna climb up there tomorrow. It's just it's such a cool place to have a rest day, I'm gonna relax, eat some uh, good food, hopefully. I might even go through this stretch routine once or twice more. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Feel free to come back here and do it whenever you like and uh, check out some of the other stretch routine videos that I've got that go into a little bit more detail and uh, I'll see you on the summit tomorrow, hopefully. Peace.